What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. This is Potty Mouth Sports, your spot for uncensored, unfiltered sports opinions. Today, we're coming with episode 21 of Zooming with the Boys. The NBA season uh, is not here yet, but uh, there's been a lot of shit going on in the offseason. So I figured uh, we'd take some time to go over all the signings, all the trades that have happened so far, players moving from one spot to the other to the other. And, uh, you know, to start the new season, I had to bring uh, I had to bring an NBA insider in. He runs his own platform called Grind Never Stops Podcast. He's got his own little thing going, but uh, he's always welcome here at Zooming with the Boys. If you want to introduce yourself to the audience, sir. Yeah, my name's DJ Joe. I have a podcast. You can check it out on YouTube. But uh, thanks for welcoming in. I'm the pro in NBA talk. <laughs> Let's the, go. The pro. He's Adrian with uh, he's Woj. He's basically on Woj level. So um yeah. We'll go, we'll start at the beginning with all the NBA shit that's gone on so far. We'll just really talk about big names. I don't really care about little guys. Um Bobby Portis re-signed with the Bucks two years, nine mil. Uh not really much to talk about there. He's just kind of a, a bench depth for the Bucks. He he's an NBA champion now, so we got to put some respect on his name. But uh, he's definitely going to be fulfilling a bench role, especially with Giannis being the big dog in Milwaukee. Good bench player though. Like even when uh, there was injuries, he fucking came in and stepped it up for a bit. Yeah, he can give you the odd twenty game. Yeah, well, he might he might start because the Bucks lost PJ Tucker. That's true, and we'll get into that as well. Uh, PJ, PJ moved on to bigger and better things down in uh, South Beach. So um, Lonzo Ball was involved in a sign-in trade. Uh, he signed a four-year, $85 million deal with, I'm assuming, the Pelicans because it's a sign-in trade shit, so the contract would be paid by the Pelicans, but he will be on the Chicago Bulls this season. Um Big, big, big fucking move for Chicago, in my opinion. Like, uh, good for Lonzo to get his money. Um, I think his brother's image kind of helped him out getting the big contract. He's part of Clutch Sports, which if uh, our audience isn't aware, is basically LeBron's umbrella of sports agency. Uh, Rich, Rich Paul, a uh, lot of big dogs in Clutch. You got Anthony Davis, who uh, is managed by them. Uh, Draymond Green, LeBron, obviously, Lonzo. So, but big move for Chicago, in my opinion. I, yeah, I, not I, only I, that, but, sorry, they got fucking DeMar DeRozan there, too. Like, they're looking good this year, man. They're going to be solid team, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Zach, into DeMar, Zach, too. He's a baller, man. But I think it's a good move for Zoe because things weren't going well in New Orleans. No, they weren't. And on paper, a lot of like on paper there, the Pelicans were a solid team. They just couldn't execute. Like they had Brandon Ingram, they had Zion, Stephen Adams is all right. But Ben Ingram, sorry, but Ben Ingram was great at the start of the year. And then he just fall off the grid. Yeah. He's, he's not a superstar. He is, I would classify a step below that he's like at a star power like he has he can average 23 24 a game and he he was the vital point him and zion were the vital point to the offense but i don't know they just come across better teams in my opinion and they just didn't have a cohesiveness i think there was a lot going on especially when they brought eric bledsoe into the mix last year uh, they didn't really have a solidified guard situation, uh, especially like Josh Hart as well. Like coming, just like he's starting, he's not, he's on the bench, he's getting 15 minutes, he's getting fucking 35 the next game. It's just kind of a coaching uh, miss out. Yeah, but all that's another them. bum. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> like to, you need cohesiveness in your lineup and you need players to know where they stand. Yeah, you need but, depth. For sure. And yeah, Josh Hart can shoot, but that's really about it. And to say he can shoot is a bit of an overstatement. He's not really much of a yeah, he's not much of a sniper. 
But um, yeah, good on Lonzo going to the Bulls. Bulls are looking fucking pretty lethal. They picked up Alex Caruso on a four year deal as well for 37 mil. Um, good. And that's another solid pickup for the Bulls as well. Very good defensive guard coming from LA, uh, the Lake Show, NBA champion as well. Um, not really much to say about Caruso. Just uh, off off the bench, he'll be behind Lonzo, and he's good coming off the bench. He can give you twenty minutes break time for Lonzo. I think it's a good pickup for the Bulls. Yeah, because they could use that guy off the bench to play defense. Yeah, because yeah. right now they don't have anybody that can play like. Kawhi Leonard's no. defense. No. no, it's just been kind of Zach Levine doing it all himself over there for a while. <laughs> and, yeah, they're starting to put some pieces together for the puzzle yeah. over there. So it's good. And to he's see a baller. The- yeah, Levine's fucking – he's that kick and ball, man. Great, great player. Mm. But hasn't really had much help in the past. And um, Cavaliers picked up – well, re-signed Jared Allen to a five-year, $100 million deal. I don't understand that deal. I don't understand that as well. Um, don't know what Dan Gilbert's doing over there. Just fucking because blow. they because they dra- they drafted a center as well, even Mobley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Number three overall. Yeah. So yep. I don't understand. And they were also at one point uh, last year, I think it was, or maybe the year before, they were fucking rolling Javale McGee. Uh, Andre Drummond, just like two absolute big dogs who really realistically are bench players at their this point in their career, but still it's very solid bench uh, centers and can get a lot of rebounds. And yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the Cavaliers are doing. I think they've been in shell shock ever since Kyrie Irving and LeBron James stepped out of the organization. So And they also trade for Ricky Rubio. I mean... I'm not going to shit on Rick. He's not one of the – I wouldn't say he's he's not in the top 20 for point guards in the in the uh, NBA. But, I mean, tries hard. You, can, you can find worse. He tries hard. Yeah, and he tries, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Batum uh, re-signed for two years with the Clippers. Don't really have much to say there. Uh, Trey Young got his bag with the Hawks. Five year, two hundred and seven mil. Uh, the Hawks didn't really do much else other than that so far. Uh, the Heat, another sign and trade, got Kyle Lowry on a three year, eighty five mil deal. I think after the three years, they're going to uh, evaluate his play in uh, in Miami and basically go from there. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, no, Kyle's it. It all did. I wrote an article for the South Florida Tribune not too long ago, and basically the premise of it was whether I, I personally believe at the beginning of the season, Kyle uh, Kyle Lowry and Tyler Hero are going to be splitting minutes for the point guard position. But if Tyler Hero can stay healthy, stay COVID free, and show glimpses of how he was in the 2020 playoffs. I think uh, it's Tyler Hero's position to battle for. Tyler Hero's young. He can shoot. He's a very good playmaker. He's just very good offensive presence. Not shitting on Lowry when I say that. Lowry's a good he's – a, he's a very good piece as well, and he's going to play well in Miami. But uh, it's Tyler Hero's position to take. It is up to him whether he takes it because Kyle Lowry's going to just be a consistent point guard for the Miami Heat. And I think it's a better upgrade because Goran Dragic all year long was uncons- uh, like wasn't consistent. Yeah, no, he wasn't consistent at all. Um, I personally agree as well. Dragic is getting up there in age as well, so I see him having a couple more years until he reality hits him and he either retires or go to the goes to the European league or the Chinese league. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, uh, that was a win for the Heat and a loss for the Raps, in my opinion. Definitely a win for the Heat getting Lowry. I mean, Lowry, like you said, I agree. He is on, like, the decline of his career, so it is, like, Tyler Hero's position to take. But, like, Lowry's a champion, man. Like, and he has – 
he like he under pressure now. Like he's he knows the pressure in the playoffs when it comes down to it now. Great fucking even if he is on the bench, great fucking bench player to have. I love well, Lowry. And even if he's, he's on the ball. bench, even if he's on the bench, he's still gonna get twenty minutes a game. They're not just <laughs> not gonna use him. Oh yeah. And when he when he's hot, he can shoot, man. He's a good mm-hmm. shooter too. Little nice. ball, he's taking it to the rim. I still think Lowry's gonna start. I think that's not debatable. Uh Miami Heat, they have uh they have I don't know, man. a little it's bit they, they have some pieces, bud. Uh they, Hero can Hero can shoot, man. Yeah, yeah, but what did he do last year against the Bucks? He was injured and man. all all season and then he also had COVID. And yeah, that whole team was an absolute fucking COVID disaster. A bunch of them went up and down on with COVID all at different times and yeah he was also injured a lot of last year too um and that they were kind of trying to play catch up for the second half of the season because of it and the even even the they were sitting at fucking 13th at one point in the east and they crawled their way back into the into a playoff position so good on them i think they're going to be a different team this year and uh, well not a different team they're going to be the same team but they're if they stay healthy they're going to be one of the threats of the east well, they, added a, they added a couple uh, good pieces. But I still don't think Kyle Lowry is not going to play off the bench. He's not like a Carmelo Anthony. He still has skills. Well, I guess we will see what happens. Uh, the Heat also re-signed Duncan Robinson, five years, 90 mil. They re-signed Jimmy Butler, four years, 184 plus. That was a max deal. Uh, they signed P.J. Tucker to a two-year, 15-mil contract as well. Uh, they got Deadman from – well, they got him from the Hawks last year, but they re-signed him on a one-year deal. Uh, basically locking up all their key characters, and they also re-signed, I believe, Victor Oladipo as well. So, again, this is just a big health question for the Miami Heat. Yeah, but Duncan Robinson is not worth $90 million. He can shoot, bud. Yeah, but he's not that of a sniper. <laughs> yeah, he can shoot, bud. <laughs> and, he, you know, Jimmy Butler got the max, but he never made all NBAs and defenses. Because remember Clay Thompson? He was on the all-defensive team last year. Yeah, but he's a, he's a, he's a defensive. Yeah, he's but Clay, at a D. in 2019, like the year he got injured, he made all-defense. All NBA, he's the best sniper in the league, and he'd even get the max. But you get Jimmy Butler, who's sometimes known as Jimmy Buckets, gets the max. You also got to look at you have a, the highest paid player in the NBA on your team in Steph Curry as well. So Jimmy Jimmy Butler was on the All NBA third team last year and was on the All Defensive team second team last year. Yeah, but well. was he was he on the All Defense first team? Well, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was also injured, Joe. He said all defensive players. Everyone was Period. injured this That's year. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, it was a shit year. It was a shit year, but you still made all defensive and an all NBA team as well. So he deserves the he deserves the contract he got, in my opinion. He's a great fucking player. He, and he's a great two-way player as well. Yeah, he is. And he's literally the heart and soul of that team. He's a fucking dog. Bro, he don't he's take not... shit. He don't take shit, Joe. <laughs> well, what happened in the NBA Finals a couple of years ago? He fucking got the wrath of LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but is what happened. And they were, in my opinion, lucky to be even there. A lot of these, even last year with Milwaukee, like this year that just happened with Milwaukee and the Suns, both of those teams were lucky to be there because there was injuries and like James Harden and Kyrie Irving barely playing in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. If both of them played, that's a different fucking story. Brooklyn would have been there if that team was healthy. And if KD had shorter feet. Fuck. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, if his big toe wasn't as big. Yeah. You know what they say about big feet though? <laughs> big shoes. Um what, what do you think about uh do you think the Spurs got enough value for DeMar DeRozan? 
Well, we'll get to DeMar. Let's let's just keep going with the signings first, and then we'll get into the big stuff, the recent stuff. Um, <laughs> Utah Jazz re- uh, signed Mike Conley to a three-year, a $72.5 million deal. <clears throat> Not really a surprise. I know, uh, Joe, you felt the wrath of the Utah Jazz fans uh, last week when Man. you made some statements about uh, their team. Uh I I agree with you as well, man. I I mean I don't. Mike Conley is no superstar. He he's way past his prime. And the fact Ever that he's, he's getting been... like almost twenty mil a year, well more than twenty mil a year. That's uh that's uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. I would never give Mike Conley that money. And Rudy Gobert, he is a fucking stud. Uh, I believe. I don't agree with you that he's not a superstar uh, just because he puts up 15 points, but um, he's just a but defensive he, fucking clog in the paint. And, yeah, but he's a liability on the offensive end. Okay, then that's why the Utah Jazz need to put more pieces on the offensive end to, uh, to kind of circle around that and let Rudy be a paint presence. I don't know, man. It just There's one player that is someone that can get it done, and that's Spider Mitchell. Other than that, nobody. Nobody at all, huh? No, not Joe Ingles or well, Jordan Clarkson. <laughs> that's what I mean. They, Jordan Clarkson, I believe, won six man of the year. Uh, but yeah, Joe he can Ingles, give you a fucking random 30 piece anytime. Yeah, and yeah, Joe. But, man. I, I what did don't, he what do you mean, man? That? He didn't do shit in the playoffs. He, no, what he happened? so. Whatever. The fucking Milwaukee Bucks won the fucking championship. What else do you want me to tell you? That's what happened. They won the championship because the refs were on their payroll. No, man, because <laughs> of injuries, straight up. That's, yeah, I'm chalking it up to injuries as well. If everyone was healthy, the playoffs would have went out differently. Ten and, times different. Um. <clears throat> The Kings. Oh, why are you disrespecting Giannis like that? You I gotta mean, give credit he, where credit is Yeah, I, I, I have given Giannis his flowers, bud, but I'm going to be completely <laughs> honest and say that if everyone was healthy, it would have went down different. He, he, his back would have been against the wall a bit more. He got uh, lucky, and he shot good in his free throws in the last couple of games. Yeah, that was a miracle, right? Well, Milwaukee's yeah. a terrible, terrible shooting team. If if we're gonna go there, oh yeah, Gian, Giannis himself carried that whole team to the chip, and yeah. Drew Holiday's defense. Sure, yeah, Drew Holiday. Chris- also, if we want to talk about offensive liabilities, Drew Holiday was an offensive liability throughout that playoff run. Oh, yeah. But Chris Paul did not play well because of Drew Holiday. Yeah, agreed. And where was Devin Booker in four of the six games? He wasn't uh, anywhere to be fucking found either. So, yeah, because he was raped by PJ Tucker. They played a really fast paced game in all of the Western Conference playoffs. And then when they got to the finals, their pace completely slowed down and it killed them. And that's what and happened. They don't have like a big guy to dominate other than DeAndre Ayn. Mm hmm. Nobody yeah. else. And he's not even the biggest guy in the world. He's what, 6'9"? Oh, he's undersized, too. Yeah. Um, the Knicks re-signed Alec, Burke, or Alec Burks to a three-year, 30 mil contract. Just hand him money out. Uh, they also signed Evan Fournier in a sign-and-trade. Four years, 78 mil. That's a good pickup as well. Uh, I think Evan's talent kind of rotted away on the Celtics. And again, injuries like just couldn't the Celtics couldn't piece anything together. So uh, good on the Knicks for sprucing up their roster. Uh, They also re-signed Derrick Rose to a three year, forty three million dollar contract and money out left, right and center for their bench. Good on them. Um, Yeah, I'm excited to see the next uh, next year. Big time. Uh, Noel, Nerlens Noel, three years, 32 mil. Don't really think he deserves uh 10.5 a year, but who am I, bud? 
Get in the bag. Yeah. All, all the bench players on the New York Knicks are getting the fucking bags, bud. 10, 10 mil plus each of them a year. Crazy. Uh, the Lakers signed Trevor Ariza to a one-year deal. Don't really understand what they were doing there. I think they were just trying to fucking pick up some pieces that they could because the, the Russ contract, the fucking AD contract, and uh, the LeBron contract kind of add up. I guess we'll fucking talk about the elephant in the room right off the bat. <laughs> the Los Angeles Lakers signed fucking Russell Westbrook. And, uh, or no, we traded, sorry, we traded for Russell Westbrook. We got rid of uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope. We got rid of Kyle Kuzma as well. And I believe um, Montrez. Montrez, yeah. And uh, that's a big trade. A lot of, uh, I don't know, mediocre pieces going to Washington. <laughs> but there's a lot of them, so that I don't know. I personally think the Lakers won that trade big time. Kyle Kuzma is a fucking band-aid out there, just a waste of space. Uh, I don't, Montrez I don't, Harrell is good, but I don't think he was Montrez Harrell doesn't Laker. fit the yeah he doesn't yeah, fit he the, wasn't Lakers as good on the Lakers system yeah exactly but yeah it's also because fucking... our coach our coach didn't play him or utilize yeah. him at all even in the playoffs a lot of the regular season as well I personally think this is, just brings new energy to the Lakers uh, kind of a three headed monster with Ross AD and LeBron uh, I'm gonna see how it works out. I don't have 100% confidence in it right now, but I'm excited that Russ is in a Laker uniform back at home in LA. Uh, Joe, what do you think of the Russ, the Russ move? I think the Lakers obviously win that deal. And if you think that the Wizards got something, then you, you have to be drug tested. Because Kuzma... <laughs> Man, Kuzma is a complete bum. He, what, what, I agree. The, the only games that he actually played well is when the games were they were up by like 60 points. <laughs> <laughs> the the games that are like completely irrelevant. Like the fucking Come in and pop at 20, 30. Yeah, the Lakers against the Sacramento Kings or some shit like that. It's just games that are completely irrelevant. Kyle Kuzma will pop off. And Montres Harrell. I disagree with you. Montrez Harrell was a key piece for the Lakers all year long, up until the playoffs where they didn't even play it. Yeah, and, and that's KC, a that's a Frank Vogel issue. And but KC, the reason KCP was traded because a lead GM said mm -hmm. if you're missing threes, you're out of here. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, <clears throat> um. If history shows you anything, LeBron James is the general manager on every one of his teams. And uh, I think with the help of Rob Palenka, I think they made this, they got this deal done. They, they got this trade done. And uh, yeah, LeBron and Rob are obviously running this whole show. So, But I don't understand why the Wizards traded their franchise point guard and John Wall for Russell Westbrook. And then they traded Russell Westbrook for, for bums and. Uh, well, John Wall was out for what two years, mm -hmm. and something like that. that yeah. I mean, if Clay were to miss this year coming up, that would be three seasons, and I would start to question whether I'm gonna keep paying this guy money to sit on the mm -hmm. fucking bench or to go on a cruise in the fucking San Francisco. Well, yeah, I mean, Bay. KD came back already with the same injury, so <laughs> yeah. So I think the Warriors in the Warriors example, I think that uh, they knew they didn't really have what it takes and just use the year for development, use the year for Steph to get back into the feel of what he does. Steph's got some more kahunas than Clay Thompson does, in my opinion. Uh, good on Steph for playing the season out because fuck. I would have even, out. I would have even given the fucking hand an extra year if that was the case. Like they made yeah. it close too. Like they were a fucking ninth seed and they had the play-in game against the Lakers. So that for the second in MVP. I kind of want to. I kind of want to speed through some of these fucking just big names, but not maybe big production. 
Uh, Ken Bazemore went to the Lakers. Dwight Howard went to the Lakers. Bobin, uh, I don't, Joe, how do you say Bobin's fucking last name, bud? Boban, not yeah, Boban. There you go, bud. Two years, <laughs> 75 or two years, seven mil with the Mavericks. Tim Hardaway Jr., four years, 75 mil Mavs. Uh, Reggie Bullock got three years, 30.5 mil for the Mavs. That is an overpay, in my fucking opinion. Um, Blake Griffin re signed with the Nets. The Nuggets re signed Jeff Green to a two year, 10 mil contract. Michael uh, Green, two years, 17 mil. Will uh, Will Barton, two years, 32 mil. That's a bit of an overpay as well, in my opinion. And Austin Rivers to a one-year contract for the Nuggets. Um, TJ McConnell, four years, 35.2 mil for the Pacers. Uh, Pelicans got uh, Devontae Graham in a uh, four-year, four, uh, four-year, 47 mil uh, for a sign and trade, I'm assuming that's with the uh, Bulls for Lonzo Ball. <clears throat> Pistons, Kelly Olinick, three years, 37 mil. Holy fuck, how desperate are you to fucking pick anybody up? <laughs> Christ, you're paying fucking Kelly Olinick 12 plus a year. Yikes. He was a key piece for the Miami Heat. Yeah, what in the playoffs when he came off the goddamn bench? Are you gonna pay a fucking bench player f- almost like 13 mil to fucking yeah? I don't know. And it's the Pistons as well. If I if I was the Pistons, I'd be saving any fucking dime I can to try and entice somebody with a fucking max contract in the offseason. Yeah, but no one wants to play for the Pistons. No, obviously. Well, they not. just got the number one pick. They need to start fucking trying to get some pieces around it. Yeah. They also signed Corey Joseph to a two-year, 10 mil contract. That's pretty fair, in my opinion. Uh, the Raptors re-signed Gary Trent Jr. to a three-year, $54 million contract. What are you guys doing? I mean, he came to the Raps and played pretty decent, but that's only because the Raptors literally have no one on their team. So any random player could stand it at any time on that team. And yeah, that's so overpaid. Same with Kem Burke. Who the fuck is Kem that? Kem Say his name right. That, that's saying everything right there. Who the <laughs> fuck is that, bud? And is why Canadian, are we resigning him? Yeah, I don't give a fuck, bud. Oh. He can be fucking Swedish for all I give a shit. <laughs> Man. Definitely an overpay for Gary Trent Jr. Don't know what they're doing there. I would all that's another situation. That's more of a situation where you're trying to entice somebody to uh sign a big contract to go there because you have a solid foundation. It's just of young players, it's just like literally you plugged in Kawhi and you won a championship. You need a superstar on that team. Like we don't give a fuck anymore. We got our chip. Yeah, obviously. That's what but it's it, starting to be. It you guys sucks, are starting to fall like, apart again. Literally, it's like we're just going right back down to the fucking like how bad we used to be, which was yeah. terrible. Yeah. And uh let me look. Spurs got uh Doug McDermott three years, 42 mil sign and trade. That's a bit uh a bit too much in my opinion. Spurs also got Zach Collins, three years, 22 mil. Uh, the Suns re-signed Chris Ball to a four-year deal worth up to 120 mil. No surprise there. Fucking closest shot he's ever got to a ring, so I'm assuming he's just going to want to keep going for more. Chris Ball's getting up there, though. I'm surprised he signed a four-year deal. Yeah, me too. I thought it would have been a two-year. <laughs> but and then seeing where he went from there, but. The Suns will still be great. Oh, the, Su- the Suns, yeah, the Suns are a young team, but Chris That's Paul too isn't much. Yeah, Chris Paul isn't young. Yeah, Suns are. Yeah, but Chris Paul can still get it done. Yeah, you well, can't. I mean, he 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 didn't. But they, <laughs> but... He went to the finals though. So, but did he get a ring? Don't matter if you win by an inch or a quarter. You know how mile, much, you, buddy, you know how much bullshit <laughs> I've heard over the years of oh, what's LeBron's finals record? I mean, it, the, there, it's one thing to go to the finals 10 years in a row, it's another thing to go to the finals for the first time when you're 36 years old and like you don't win. 
That's a bit different, in my opinion. Yeah, but Chris Paul, is, I'm not <clears throat> saying that Chris Paul is the greatest player of all time. No. He's one of the better point guards of all time. Yeah, he's definitely one of the greatest point guards. But he still is. He doesn't have great. that ring. Like, yeah, but Allen Iverson never got a ring. But he's talking, still. Man, that's AI, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Okay, AI, 10 so. years later, you'll be like, oh, it's CP3. I'm taking Allen Iverson over Chris Paul any day of the week. No, I am too. Sorry, but just the way it is. Anyways, Phoenix Suns also re-signed Cameron Payne to a three-year deal, 19 mil. Good pickup for that kind of money, in my opinion. They also signed JaVale McGee. Gives him a little more height at the center position. Maybe uh, move uh, DeAndre Ayton over to the power forward if – they're fucking doing crunch maybe the last five minutes of the game. Just give them a little more height in the paint. Or if they <laughs> want to go the speed route, you can move. It just gives them options. Like DeAndre Ayton can fucking play the center. Or you can move him over to power forward and move JaVale McGee in, depending on what team you're playing and their fucking defensive matchup. But good pickup. <clears throat> the Thunder. Uh Resigned Shea uh, Gilgis, Gilgis Alexander to a five year, 172 mil contract. Pretty fucking nuts. Uh, Mike, wow. Mas- Mike Mascala two, got two years, 70, or sorry, seven mil. A lot of numbers here, but uh, fuck. Shea got a bag. Did he ever? Canadian boy. Good for you. said you don't give a shit about Canadian. I didn't say that. I said I didn't give a shit about Ken Birch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say nothing about giving a shit about Canadian players. That's, yeah, but that's too much. Money. Uh, but don't twist my words on me here, Joseph. Rage. <laughs> oh, the first Christ, rage. The fuck we need a rage merch. counter in the corner. Um, I think it's a bit too much money, but what can the Thunder do? Honestly, like they don't really have anybody, and they're they got draft capital out the ass for the next five years so with all the fucking trades that they made with russ and with cp3 and shit like that they've really been building a lot of draft you capital. forgot pandemic p pandemic p too yep play up p so uh yeah no they've got a lot of draft capital i guess they're just trying to lock shay down and try build maybe build around him i don't think he's the player to build around but uh Hopefully, he changes my mind in the next five years on this contract. Uh, I can also see him getting moved in the next couple if he he doesn't put up a big production. It just all depends on how they build in the next few years. They're obviously a rebuilding team. So, Uh, Trailblazers signed Cody Zeller to a one-year deal and uh, re-signed Norman Powell to a five-year $90 million contract. That's a lot of money for Norm, the Storm, in my opinion. Mm Mm-hmm. He's ball- I mean, he was balling at the end there when he went to the Trailblazers, but fuck, yeah. man. I mean, he was balling on the routes pretty good, too. He's a great fucking bench player. He could come around and give you fucking 20, 30 here and there. And the guy mm. can take it to the hoop. Yeah. I've seen him slam it down on a few fucking, like, AD, and he can take it to the hoop, that guy. He's, he's all right, Norman Powell. Definitely over a little overpaid. But yeah, I like he him. did little overpaid, but I'm also I expecting like, them to move CJ McCollum if they're paying Norman Powell that kind of money. Yeah, but <clears throat> if you're in the NBA and you have one good year, you get that bag. Yeah. Doesn't matter who you are. It's a spending mm-hmm. kind of league. The fucking salary cap's like $145 million. Yeah, but do you know what the NBA stands for? Never mm-hmm. broke again. <laughs> no, none of these boys are going broke again. I'll tell you that. None of these fellas. Um, we'll keep moving on. Andre Drummond went to the 76ers. Uh, holy fuck. How much power do they need in the paint? Christ. Uh, I'm <laughs> expecting Ben Simmons to be moved out by the beginning of the season. Oh, yeah. I already emptied his locker room, but... <laughs> you, you emptied the jerseys and the jogs and the, the warm-up jumpsuit and everything? You got it all oh, out Ben there. Simmons, man. He's a complete bum. Did you <laughs> yeah, see Yeah, I've been he... saying that for years. The guy 
is a po- a point guard that can't shoot, and I've fucking he, never heard he, of that. He is one of the best defensive guards in the league. Uh, I'll give him some flowers. Uh, his playmaking ability is pretty good, but obviously his playmaking ability is going to be really good when all he can do is drive. They can kind of – defenses can kind of uh, make schemes around that to suffocate him into – Try pulling up and shooting because he doesn't shoot and he's not a very good shooter. So that's why no, he relies man. so much on his playmaking. He's scared to shoot. Well, I mean, true. when they're leaving the point guard alone at the three point line, you know, it's a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, literally, and like he's a fucking center. How, ma- how many years does Philly have to be like in the top three seeds and yeah. just? Build a lot of hype for the playoffs just to fall short again mm, against the Atlanta Hawks. Yeah, of all teams, <laughs> that's embarrassing. I mean, as I well. can see the fucking game seven wraps. It's the last second shot. Shit, you just got beat at Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young. I mean, I get fucking ice train was out, but Jesus Christ, man. 76ers are supposed to have this fucking powerhouse team. One, I mean, I thought they had one of the best teams in the NBA. Okay, yeah, guess not. Um, guess up not. Until you, you know Ben Simmons. I mean, the, they, he, they had more than just him. I mean, they top pieces. Fuck Danny Green, though. Rage. Yeah. Fuck Danny the Green. guy's a bum, man, and they re signed him again. Yeah. <laughs> and like, to some good money as well. Yeah. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, three year deal. $85 million contract. It was a sign and trade, but he is a Chicago Bull. They're really, again, they're really fucking sprucing things up. Uh, Going to be interesting to see how they, well, DeMar will play small forward and then they'll have Zach at shooting guard and Alonzo at the point guard and they have uh, Lori. Marketing. Oh, marketing, yep. And, but he hasn't been re signed yet. Yeah, I expect that to happen. So they're going to have a solid team this year. I wouldn't mm-hmm. even be surprised if they squeak an eighth or a seventh seed out. Mm-hmm. I agree. And if they don't this year, they will next year. Like uh, they're going to, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be one of those teams to watch this year. Definitely with the moves that they've made in the off season. Uh, the box signed Rodney hood to a one year contract. Meh. Uh, they also signed George Hill to a two-year, eight mil, eight million dollar contract. I mean, not bad. You didn't spend a big, <clears throat> you didn't spend a big amount of money on him, so fuck him. Like, you know, he can be your second or your third, depending on uh, how you scramble your guards. But uh, Markeith Morris, one-year deal with the Heat. Rudy Gay signed a two-year, twelve point one million dollar contract with the Jazz. Rudy Gay, bud. You're going to hear about those Jazz fans again. And they also signed Hassan Whiteside to an undisclosed contract. Who I think <laughs> was uh, not used properly in Sacramento. And last I year. think he will be used properly in Utah. Yes, I think he will be too. And that guy has a lot more potential. He was a good fucking player on the Heat. Really good. Oh, yeah, with his uh, blocks. Man, he was, and then he came to Sacramento and got maybe five minutes a game. <laughs> Just... Yeah, I don't know if he like <laughs> fucked Luke Walton's wife or like literally. what happened, but Fuck, it made no sense why he wasn't getting any playing time. So no, he was the best, probably one of the <clears throat> best centers on that team. He was the best center yeah. on that team. Uh, getting the least minutes. The Knicks signed Taj Gibson to a two-year, ten mil contract whatever five mil a year not that big of a deal uh lakers re-signed Taylor horton tucker to a three-year 32 million dollar contract don't know where we're getting all this money to pay all these fucking people uh <laughs> Taylor obviously had a step up last year he got a lot more minutes they really utilized the role for him uh coming off the bench but um 10 mil worth don't really agree with that but what can you do uh we need depth because we have our star pieces together and we need to build a team around them. Uh, Kendrick Nunn, two years, 10 mil. Very solid. That was a fucking steal. Thanks, Kendrick. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Los Angeles. Uh, we Fired. signed Carmelo Anthony 
to a one-year contract, and we also signed Malik Monk. So I, I'm excited to see the Lakers this year. I personally think the Lakers won the offseason. Um, Guys got some good depth there. Yeah. And, and Mello might even start. I really hope this isn't uh, this isn't a flashback to, I believe, the 2017 Cavaliers where – LeBron tried to sign all of his friends and then had to trade all of his friends at the trade deadline because it wasn't working <laughs> out. And then you yeah. know, had to rush to make the playoffs in a fucking, I believe we were like a third or a sixth seed or some shit like that. And then made the NBA finals or yeah, we were between third and six could have been fourth. Uh, or fifth. Fourth seed. Yeah. We were fourth. And yeah, made the NBA finals. Uh, Robin Lopez signed with the magic. Have fun rebuilding. Orlando, you guys don't really have much going on for the next five fucking plus years. You got rid of literally everybody. Yeah, and you they forgot, got a couple. You forgot talking about Vooch, who's on the Bulls. Oh, you yeah. Talk about the I'm oh, just yeah, going chronological. Vooch We're in like this August 3rd signings. Uh, Patty Mills went to the Nets. Bruce Brown went to the Nets. Um James Johnson went to the Nets. We're just kind of scrolling through. Steph Curry re-signed with the Warriors for a four-year, $215 million contract. Just another fucking bag. Another day in the office for Steph. Just getting all of his fucking money. Um, Danny Green signed a two-year, $20 million contract with the 76ers. What a fucking Um, waste. Um. Dennis Cantor re-signed with the Celtics. John Collins re-signed with the Hawks for a five-year, $125 million contract. That's uh, that, was, that was fair on both ends for John and for the Hawks. John's a very good piece to the Hawks, uh, Hawks team, so that, that's fair yeah, on both ends. I didn't know that you could average 14 points and seven rebounds can get you 100 mil. Well, it just did, bud. <laughs> Victor Oladipo, like we stated, uh, re-signed with the Heat. Uh, Terrence Davis to the Kings. Kemba Walker went to the Knicks. Uh, Mo Wagner went to the Magic. Kind of irrelevant as well. He was best known as a uh, prospect for the Los Angeles Lakers that ended up getting moved around the league. Uh, Aaron Baines was waived by the Toronto Raptors. Very good call on the Raptors part. Get rid of that fucking mm-hmm. contract. Um, the Wizards signed Spencer Dinwiddie to a three-year, the $62 million contract. That's well, a that, pickup. But not the pickup, like, that's a lot of money, wise. though. Yeah. Yeah. I, it says it's a sign-and-trade, so where did he actually go? No, it was like a three-team deal. Oh, okay. And Either way. The, Good the players, players, a little too returned. much money. That was all garbage. Um, Lou Will signed a one-year deal with the Hawks, obviously, just so he can enjoy the luxury of the strip clubs of Atlanta. It's kind of why I think he's still there. He's and, fading away. Um, James, James Harden to Atlanta, confirm. <laughs> <laughs> James and Lou, huh? Um, the New York Knicks re-signed Julius Randle to a four-year, $117 million contract. It's fair on both ends as well. Julius Randle was well-deserved. Uh, I believe he won most improved player last year, and he was he was in top five in MVP voting, definitely. So well-deserved. Um, Frank Kaminsky re-signed with the Suns. Uh, Which players, man. <laughs> uh, Javante Green re-signed two-year deal with the Bulls. Justice Winslow went, uh, signed with the Clippers. Reggie Jackson re-signed for two years, 22 mil. Uh, also, I believe Reggie got moved, didn't he? No, it was Rondo and Beverly. Never mind, we'll get to that. The Hornets signed fucking Kelly Oubre to a two-year, 26-plus. <sighs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know what like, it is. I never knew what it was with that guy. I mean, Kelly Kelly went to the Warriors, and there was a lot of hype with him, you know, just being a very good bench piece for bench piece slash potential starting role for the Warriors because of uh, the Clay Thompson injury and just, you know, that team in general. But uh, he was an absolute bust last year. 
well, you can just call a spade a spade on that. Uh, yeah. He performed below <laughs> expectation. So maybe, uh, maybe moving to the Hornets will uh, revitalize him. And uh, he apparently some of the inside, some of the Kelly Oubre stands that, uh, well, a Kelly Oubre stand that I'm fan, uh, friends with. He, uh, he likes to uh, say that Kelly's a really good two-way player and uh, he used to be. Uh, I, I don't really know that's the case anymore. He's got more to prove, definitely. So Yeah, but him and du- Dwayne Howard used to have a Shout out Sash Father. <laughs> you, you, you really think that they, uh, they had a relationship, huh? Yeah, in Washington. They were buddies or more than buddies? More than buddies, you know. <laughs> buddies? Man. They were more than buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I said butt buddies. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right. Well, I'll leave that at that. The Pelicans re-signed Willie Hernan Gomez to a three-year deal. Uh, the Warriors got fucking Andre Iguodala again on a one-year contract. That's a that's a solid pickup for them, I guess. Just a little veteran presence from the bench. Back home. <laughs> Back home. The uh, Brooklyn Nets signed Kevin Durant to a four-year, $198 million contract. Locked his fucking ass in big time. Don't blame them at all. Spend yeah. every, You spend every fucking dollar that guy wants. If he wants 210 you give him 210 Um <laughs> Mavericks re-signed Luka Doncic to a five-year deal, $207 million uh, contract. Uh, another, another player you don't you pay. Yeah, you don't fuck around. <laughs> yeah. The fucking, uh, yeah. This has been a lot of uh, material for memes lately. Uh, Dennis Schroeder signed a one-year $5.9 million contract with the Celtics. I believe he rejected a deal from the Lakers for four years for 84 mil. And then signed a one-year $5.9 million contract with Celtics after the Lakers pulled the fucking paper off the table. Yeah, but he rejected the offer. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He rejected the offer, and then the Lakers fucking said, all right, fuck you, took the offer off the table, and then the fucking Celtics paid him 5.9 or what? Yeah, 5.9. Yeah, it was probably the other best offer he got. He got fucked in the bum. And he was a flop, too, in the first round. He was, yeah. There was a lot of hype about Dennis Schroeder, and I didn't really understand it, so... Uh, have fun resting in peace in Boston. I, I mean, I even see Dennis coming off the bench in Boston. I don't think he starts. Yeah, but they shipped off Kemba Walk. So, so the point guard position is open. Where did Jalen Brown go? He's not a point guard. Yeah, but he can play shoot and then fucking have Marcus Smart play uh, point guard. I'd rather have Marcus, same, I'd rather have Marcus, Marcus Smart, Smart play point guard than fucking Dennis yeah, but Schroeder. Smart Marcus has been Smart always off the guard. bench. Yeah, but he could come. He could be a starter. Personally, in my opinion. Yeah, but and then the you got way. Tatum, and that kid's gonna be a baller. Who? Tatum's a fucking superstar. Yeah, you, Tatum's gonna be the next superstar. Well, he already is. He's turning into that guy. I, I love Tatum. I love Tatum, man. I mean, I think he is. Tatum's a superstar, in my opinion. He's fucking dope. And he's young as shit. He's an animal. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Waiting on you, Joe. Yeah, Joe, man, what do you got to say, like, bud? I, I see I the slip. Like but Jason let me hear. Tatum? Get out of here with Why? Jason Tatum. Why? Why? Let's what has he done? Show me his resume. He's only like, what, 22 years old? So he's, he's got a lot of time, but where he's not a superstar yet. He has the potential to be, but he's not a superstar yet. I he's mean, a superstar, bud. No. He's an all star. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here with that. So you trying to tell me Zaza Pachulia is a oh, enough with the Zaza. I, I fucking... don't think Zaza Pachulia and Jason Tatum are in the same realm. Yeah, like, come on, man. That's You're fucking trying to compare Zaza and Jason Tatum here. Like, we're going to a better argument. He made the All Star game. When did Zaza Pachulia ever make an All Star game? It was, I'm pretty sure as a joke, didn't he? 
Yeah. <laughs> it was like a John Scott thing in the NHL All-Star game, but for the NBA. It's fucking long time. Or not long time yeah, but ago, but... Jason Tatum could be a superstar, but he'll get there, but he's not there yet. I think he's pretty well there. He's the star of that team. He is the star of that team. Yeah, well, and they got good go. players on, and they got good players on the team. And he's pretty super, so put it together, super yeah, and a star. He's a fucking superstar, but he's a pretty man. super guy. Uh, Udonis Haslam resigned with the Heat for one year, probably gonna retire at the end of the year, in my opinion. Kawhi Leonard resigned uh, for four year, one hundred and seventy six point three million dollar contract with the Clippers. No surprise there. <clears throat> Opted out uh with a player option at the beginning of the offseason kind of scared everybody but everyone every you know smart nba fan kind of knew he was just gonna resign just at a different different uh financial uh i don't even know what i'm trying to say different fucking just a different different quote we'll just say that different financial quote Uh, i don't think they're gonna go anywhere as long as PG is on that team, they're not going. I don't think it's PG's problem. I just don't think oh, they have. PG balled the, out when Kawhi went down. I just don't really think they have everything that they need. They have Sergi Baca. Yeah, he's a fucking wash. Sergi Baca? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Bucks re-signed uh, Thanasis. Onto Takumpo to a two year deal. Thanos. Yeah, Thanos <laughs> hanging out with this bro for two more years. Uh, big trade. One of the first big trades. Uh, the Clippers traded uh, Patrick Beverly, who I fucking hate. Rajon Rondo and uh, Daniel Oturu to the Grizzlies for Eric Bledsoe. Um, I wouldn't have made this trade. Obviously, it's a contract dump. Just get rid of Rondo and get rid of three players' contracts and just pick up Eric Bledsoe's smart move for the Clippers, in my opinion. But uh, talent-wise, I wouldn't really take this, especially when you're trying to win a chip and you want depth at at every position. Um, I don't like Patrick Beverly. I don't see the hype. I don't think he's a great – I don't think he's a good player at all. I think he just runs around like a chicken with his head fucking cut off on the court, just fouling people and just getting don't even find spaces. him a good defender. Yeah, uh, I don't find him a good defender either. Like a lot of it's just media bullshit. Uh, I've seen he him runs get around burned. and gets in people's faces. That everyone thinks that he's a good fucking defensive <laughs> player, but no, uh, I mean the because yeah, he causes really a scene it. every time. That's why <clears throat> he's out there pushing Chris Paul from behind in the back when he's not looking and shit. Good for you, man. So. Uh, yeah, this trade could go either way in my books. Uh, I don't really like moving Rondo. I know Rondo's getting up there in age, but if you're trying to make playoff runs, Rondo, I know last year he wasn't as good as when he was with the Lakers and won the chip. But, uh, I mean, having that veteran presence come off the bench is smart, in my opinion, even if he's the third option point guard. But uh, Eric, the Eric Bledsoe pickup can either help them or hurt them. And it's just we need to wait until the season starts to see how that's going to go. I think it's a horrible train. He played bad. He didn't play very good last year, yeah. And I think Rondo have better potential than Eric Bledsoe. And Beverly's trash. All he does is trying to start shit or like he plays defense once every season, you know. Mm. And then, uh, no, like, yeah, he, he, he'll make one play and then everyone just labels him as a fucking defensive lockdown when he's not. Mm. Um, news today, uh, actually, before we get into the news today, yesterday, the Celtics signed Marcus Smart to a four year, $77 million contract extension. And then today, which is the 17th of August, Joel Embiid signed a four-year, $196 million contract extension with the 76ers. No surprise there. He's a franchise player. Uh, And uh, (laughs) pretty funny that we mentioned Patrick Beverly. The Memphis Grizzlies traded Patrick Beverly, the fucking Minnesota (laughs) Timberwolves, for uh, Jarrett Kluver and Joanico Hernan Gomez. 
So uh, have fun rotting in Minnesota there, Pat. Yep. Where you belong, you fuck. Yeah, he got Three. shipped because no one wants that guy. He's just getting shipped from team to team now until he fucking rots out. Yeah, I think I think he'll stay in Minnesota, and uh, yeah, he'll be fucking punching the air like fucking Cuba Gooden Jr. and Boys in the Hood. I'm a Maybe. fucking fifteenth man. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> there'll be a next top duel with Cat and Pat Bev. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. But, Are you uh, disrespecting Carl Anthony Towns? I am. I, I don't was. think he's that guy, pal. He, he's only that guy with uh, Jordan Woods, but he's not. Uh, he's not that guy on the court. Yeah, he's the man in Minnesota. But what the fuck does that have to do with anything? He's no fucking bad. Kevin Garnett. I fucking tell you that. Yeah, he's no Kev. But, uh, yeah, no fuck, man. A lot of moves so far. I expect more to happen. Um, you know, we're just really scratching the surface with the potential trades that could go on. It was a lot of signings that have happened so far. Uh, teams to look out for. I mean, I personally think the Lakers won the offseason, and I also think Chicago really spruced, like, turned their fucking franchise around into yep. – I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say competitive at this point because they still need to execute everything, but the names on the fucking paper are pretty nice right now. It's a big change from what they had last year. So, Yeah, their uh, they're GM did a good job, Chicago Bulls, for sure. That's the biggest, uh, the biggest one I'm taking away from that fucking off season is the Bulls for sure. Yeah, I think and the Lakers, Lakers obviously. But. Lakers Bulls was I think Lakers because they got Melo, they got Russell Westbrook, and hopefully mm-hmm. AD and LeBron will be healthy. I hope so too. I, how, I really how hope everyone underwhelming. Is. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bob. Oh no! All all I said was I really hope everyone is healthy this year. Like I just yeah, want to see too. all these fucking teams duke it out because like there's so much talent spread all over the league. So. And for the Bulls, the sky's the limit because they got Vucevic, Levine, Demar, Lonzo. We need to see if they'll have chemistry together. Yeah. Chemistry is a big thing. Uh, Execution is another big thing. And health is another big thing in the NBA. Sorry, boys. So. I think I was lagging for a sec. It's all good. Man. I was going to say another thing. Really underwhelming how fucking the Raptors did. Like, I just don't see any potential in the next couple of years. And I know they're they're my boys, but it's just. Yeah, but that, that's why that's, it's so impressive. That's where time. I have to go in and. Tell okay, you. what? What? They've been on the road the whole season. And they I don't give a with... shit, man. man. I don't care about bro, that. What about basketball? Is basketball. Yeah, that's the worst. Freddy. No, that's the worst money on a maximum contract extension. I'm sorry, yeah, but, but that guy averaged... ain't it. Yeah, yeah but man, he he's a good 20... player. He's not a superstar. Pascal Siakam is not a superstar. I'm but sorry. he averaged 24.7 rebounds. Because who else is going to do it on the Raptors? Steady uh, Freddy. I don't know, man. I disagree there. I don't see any potential in the raps for they, the they need, a they need to make one move. We need to make a big move. We need to sign a superstar because Siakam is not a superstar. He'd yeah. be a great player for for the superstar. But I but, think they need to make one move and they'll be fine. I think they need it. There are a couple pieces away, but yeah. And it depends who especially, it is. Especially, especially now that Lowry's on the Heat, and you we got just lost fucking Drogic. Yeah, Drogic doesn't even want to be there, man. He came in. I, would, I personally he's think Drogic asshole, is going to get moved again. He's yeah, in he doesn't want to be there. Yeah, he's a fucking. He's not that guy either. So he can go fuck himself for all I care. He, he can keep, his, he can keep his bags packed. <laughs> <laughs> like when he comes to Toronto, keep him packed and get the fuck out again. Like, man, if I were, if I were the Raptors, I would make a statement and trade Drogic for like a third round pick to the Minnesota. Just, Timberwolves. just for a fucking bum. 
I mean, I wouldn't even just get a, get a fucking, even a, a, I don't even know how many rounds are in the NBA draft, but like, like a third, third round pick fucking bottom of the bear, like Minnesota Timberwolves or just fucking, yeah. Just wave his ass. Yeah, just yeah your career is done bud as soon as that happens yeah no one's gonna fucking want him after that yeah no i would have <laughs> traded him for a bag of chips and i would have traded him to the minnesota timberwolves for like literally anything this, and yeah. just let him rot i mean everything was fine until he came out and said that bullshit this is not my preferred destination but we will see yeah shut the fuck up yeah we will see buddy <laughs> yeah who has the ring and who doesn't bud fucking Puss. That's fire. Guy guy gets no puss, so it's fine. <laughs> Man, I don't know where you got the dragon nickname from. He was never Jimmy. Maybe it was Jimmy in the shower or something. Maybe he's got a dragon on him. Who knows? Yeah, maybe the guy's got a hog. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. But uh yeah, no, a lot of moves. Uh a lot of it's just on paper. Not really teams making a lot of moves. There's been a couple block, a uh, couple. When uh, there's been one blockbuster trade, and it was the Russell Westbrook trade. Uh, other than that, the Pat Bev, Rajon Rondo, Eric Bledsoe trades, just a solid trade. Uh, it could go either way for either team. And uh, yeah, I expect more trades to come in the next couple of weeks. Probably going to get some late signings, but uh, as teams kind of sculpt their sculpt their rosters out for. Uh, I guess preseason because the summer league right now. So this shit doesn't really like this is just for young bucks really. And all the vets just watch and see who, which young, young players they want on their team and how, uh, how the potential of them matches up against their actual talent and their work ethic and everything. That's kind of what summer league's all about. It's just mainly for draft picks and G league players to kind of make a name for themselves. So uh, yeah, I expect some, maybe a couple more bigger trades in the next couple of weeks. And then I think the dust will settle. Everyone who's going to go places will go places and uh, everybody's going to get ready for the next season. Uh, Joe, what do you final conclusions? What do you think of the off season so far, bud? The off season was I, and I think like the, basically the free, the free agency is basically over. There might be a couple of trades or waves or signings, but this off season was good. There weren't like ten people joining one team like the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't as a. It wasn't as wow. There wasn't that wow factor like it was last year when James and uh, Kyrie won. But it, well, or it was, sorry, not Kyrie, but when James. Like James's whole drama with the Rockets, and then of which eventually led to him being traded to the Nets at the beginning of the season. So, but I think it was great. It wasn't bad. No, there's just a, I I personally find there's just a lot of names, <clears throat> and that you know a lot of basketball fans know, and uh, they're they're good players. They're not superstars, maybe by per se. Not all of them are superstars per se, but they're names that nba fans know uh and there's a lot of players moving around and uh just makes the league exciting that's what makes nba just fucking so exciting because there's so much talent and it just disperses and moves around every year and uh juggles everything up so nothing really stays the same some things do but there's also other elements uh jordan what do you think of the off season this year Oh, it was pretty good. Uh, big names got moved. The triple dub king, fucking Russell Westbrook. Obviously, that was probably the biggest one. But um, I'm just hoping this year goes a little better injury wise than last year. Fucking keep everyone healthy. Fucking that way, everyone can duke it out, and it'll be. Oh, uh, did they win? Because fucking Kyrie and James Harden were out, or you don't have to deal with any of that kind of bullshit. Fucking. Mm -hmm. which is the way I like it when two teams are fucking playing at full tilt against each other. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the fucking off season went pretty good. I think there's still going to be a couple more moves to come, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, basically a lot of the key pieces that 
have already signed or moved or settled. It's just kind of like those B list players or even C list mm-hmm. players that are going to sign here in the next couple of weeks. I don't really see any superstars getting traded. Uh, but a lot of B list players are going to get traded. Uh, and I'm all for it. Uh, makes the NBA exciting. I believe we're like two months out now from the season. Uh, this summer, they've actually gotten a, somewhat of a normal break from the NBA finals and the playoffs and season and everything, depending on where every team landed. So going into the season, there's no fucking excuses. If you can't get your health in check, it's on you, in my opinion, because we're not starting until fucking October anyway. So um yeah no this uh soft season's been dope uh does anyone have anything to share before we gtfo anything to share joe i don't i still don't understand why the celtics trade kemba walker for al horford (laughs) and the disrespect for kim birch it's real. Oh, enough with the fucking <laughs> Who is that? Who? I'm sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. Ken Birch? Yeah, Canadian. Who got drafted the uh, top 10 by the Orlando Magic. It's a Canadian Toronto boy. Put some respect on his name. <laughs> no, nah, man. Still don't ring a bell. <laughs> no? All right, this has been episode 21 of Zooming with the Boys. Like always, you can uh, check the link in the bio. Check us out on Instagram, Twitter. uh, Cop some merch before season one ends and all the items expire. And then we get into uh, season two drop. Stay posted for all that. Link is in the bio for the merch as well. And uh, check out my boy's fucking podcast, Grind Never Stops. I'll drop a link in that uh, in the bio as well. So you can go check that out big nba talk uh he's big on hockey as well when hockey comes up so um you're gonna want to check that out it's a good listen as well you can find him on here on youtube apple podcast spotify as well so um yeah this has been zooming with the boys episode 21 nba offseason coverage a lot to cover it's kind of like we were naming off names for a sec thank you joe for coming on the uh thanks for the, bringing me in thanks for coming on the pod EJ bud. joe and uh, whenever <laughs> whenever you're ready for the boys to hop on, the grind never stops. Uh, you fucking let me know. You have my number. You have my uh, you have my contact info. So we're all. Oh yeah, here. I know where you live too. Gotta yep. get us on for an NHL one. Get Brandon talking about Sid and the boys one last. Sid the time. fucking kid. Bud. <laughs> we need it. The streets need it. But uh, <laughs> peace, peace. <laughs> we'll, go. <laughs> we'll go from there. We'll go from there.